Hey everyone, welcome back to our Yubi Chef weekly videos. Uh, we've got some lovely dishes for you, uh, featuring wild garlic on the weekly bake and in the starter. We've got some Cornish hake on the main course with some mussels. And on dessert, we've got some Yorkshire rhubarb that's banging season and it's lovely. Uh, so hopefully you've got your box, you've sorted everything into the uh, dishes, you've got your recipes lined up, and then we're going to get cooking. Our weekly bake to start off the meal, we have these lovely wild garlic crackers here. We have a wild garlic and lemon hummus, and then in here, we have these lovely wild garlic shoots just to give that extra punch at the end. So to start with, we're just going to get a tray like this one. We're going to line up our crackers in here. And once we've got them lined up, we're going to cover them in a little bit of rapeseed oil. And we don't need to season them as they've already been seasoned. So just going to grab the rapeseed oil. We're just going to drizzle a little bit over the top just to give them a little shine as they go through the oven. So once you've done that, we're going to take these. We're going to put them in the oven for one to two minutes. And then I'll be back to show you how to place it up. So the crackers have been out of the oven now for one minute. We've just let them cool. We're going to finish off. So you can see I've started piping little dots of the uh, wild garlic and lemon hummus. And then on there we've added these little wild garlic shoots. So these wild garlic shoots are just going on raw. And where they're the young shoots, they're not, they're not as punchy, so you can eat, eat them raw, otherwise it might blow your head off a little bit. So once we finish that, we're going to put them onto our presentation dish. So start by just laying them round in a circle. We like to use wild garlic quite a lot on our menus this time of year as it grows in abundance right near us and we can really make the most of it. It's a lovely ingredient for spring and leading up to spring as well. So once you've gone in your presentation dish, take them to the table and enjoy. Fish starter for you, we have a lovely risotto nero with cuttlefish. So here we have a red pepper, chilli and basil salsa. In the pan, I've got the risotto nero, so that comes in its container with some parmesan and butter, and then the liquid comes in an eco bag, so I've just put that in there. And then finally, we have the roasted cuttlefish with charred lemon. So this is going to go into the oven for four to five minutes, and the risotto we're going to get cooking as well. So we'll be back in that time to plate up. So to plate up the risotto nero, cuttlefish and the lemon just been in the oven for four to five minutes, and we've just been cooking away our risotto as well. And as you can see now, that liquid and butter's all evaporated. And there's still a little bit of um, moisture in there as well because we don't want a too dry risotto. So it's plate up, we've got a heated serving plate again. We're just going to spoon this now into the middle of our serving plate. And we're just going to press it down lightly just to try and create like a little circle. Like so. Then just spread it out. What you can do if you want, just to help it a little bit, you can pick up the plate and just tap the bottom of it. And then that will help level it out as well. Next up, I'm going to get a spoon and I'm going to get some of this some of this salsa, I'm going to place it in the centre. So in here we've got some lovely chilies, some red pepper that have just been quickly sweated off, and a lovely basil oil and some fresh herbs in there as well, just to tie it together. Get the cuttlefish finally. You can add just a little bit of rapeseed over the top of it as well. It's already been seasoned so you don't need to worry about that. So we'll grab it here, place it around, like so. We'll just get some of those tentacles as well that have been charred, just give another little flavour. Just keeping that in the centre, just keeping the salsa clear for that nice vibrant contrast of red and black. And then we have the charred lemon, just going to put on the side. And here we have your risotto nero with cuttlefish and charred lemon. For the meat starter, we have a lovely char sweet pork belly. Uh, which is just here in this pouch and in there we've got some lovely sesame, lovely soy sauces, rice wine vinegar. We have an Asian dressing to go with that, a lovely pickled plum, plum carpaccio just to cut through it, some crispy wild rice and a spring onion salad. To start with we're going to take our pork belly, we're just going to put it into a pan of scalding water for about five to six minutes until it's nice and hot and then we'll be back to plate up. So to finish off the pork belly starter we're going to start by taking out the pork belly from the water. I've just got a little dish here that I'm going to put it into. Just carefully pull it into there delicately and then just leave it there for one second. So to start plating, you can start with the plum carpaccio. So like always we have a presentation side. So we're going to flip that over, we're going to remove the bottom piece of paper here like that. Then we're going to put this, invert this onto the centre of our plate, push it down slightly and then just carefully remove that Yubi Chef paper to put the pickled plum carpaccio on. Next up, I'm going to cut the pork belly out of its little eco bag and I'm going to keep some of these juices just to finish off because it's a really nice dressing that we've got in there with it. So just carefully empty that out into the bowl. It's very delicate the pork. So to plate up, we're just going to grab a little spoon here, 
three did across. And we're just going to carefully flip it over so we've got the skin facing up and then place that in the centre of our serving dish. I'm just going to quickly wash my hands. To finish plating, we're going to get the spring onions and we're going to arrange these around the pork belly. Just gives it a nice little colour to the dish and a little freshness as well. So a nice meaty pork belly there with all the uh, spices and the sesame and the soy. Put a little bit on there as well. When you're doing this, obviously, feel free to be creative as you are the chef. We've got some wild rice going on next, which is just here. I'm going to put that on top just to give that skin a little bit of a crunch. Where it's been in the bag, you won't have any texture on there. So this is just going to add a little bit of texture to the dish. And then finally, snip off the, the corner of the wild, uh, the Asian dressing, sorry. I'm just going to drizzle that gently around the dish. And there we have our Asian inspired starter of pork belly, char siu style, with pickled plums and spring onions. So for a vegetarian starter, we have a lovely wild garlic dish for you. In the pan, we have our wild garlic velouté. We have this egg here, which is a, uh, a black because we've got a truffle crumb around it. A lovely wild garlic oil and some lovely truffle as well. As you can see, we're really making the most of the wild garlic. So to start with, we're going to get this egg, we're going to put it into the oven, four to five minutes, so about 190, and we'll be back to plate up. So the egg's just been in the oven now for five minutes, so we're just going to take it out and place it here. Just get rid of that container quickly. So to plate up, we've got a nice warm bowl for the soup. And here we have the wild garlic velouté. You just want to bring that to the simmer and you don't want to boil that too much otherwise you'll start to lose that lovely vibrant green colour. So we're just going to pour it in there like that. The next up, what we're going to do is we're going to take the egg and we're going to make a little incision either side, like a little V. And a little top tip is if you have a wet cloth, you can just wipe it off to get rid of that yolk there, just so then you don't get any on the actual egg. I'm going to take it away and just hook that little bit out. And we're just going to leave it there quickly. And again, just wipe our knife. With the egg, we're going to take a little bit of mold and salt, and just season it in the centre and place that just off centre of the in the bowl to sit in there. We're going to take our wild garlic oil and with this eco bag, we're just going to snip the corner off the end off. And just do a little drizzle on top. And then finally, we can take our truffle and we'll lay it in the bowl. So we'll do a little bit on the egg as well. So in there you've got that lovely wild garlic velouté, the truffle egg, nice green colour. Put those final bits on. And then with this little uh, last bit of egg here, you can either have it as a little chef snack that I like to do, or if you wish, you can put it in the bowl to finish it off like that. And then here we have our wild garlic velouté with a truffle egg and fresh truffle. First main course on this week's weekly menu, lovely bit of Cornish cake. So here we have the Cornish cake that's just been coloured for you. To go with that, we have some lovely charlotte potatoes that have been seasoned up, uh, saffron sauce, root vegetables, lovely mussels, and finally some sea herbs that we've foraged ourselves. So to start with, we're going to put the hake in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, halfway through, we're going to retain the lid loosely on the um, sea herbs like so, and put that in the oven for a further six minutes, and I'll be back to plate that all up. So the hake has just been in the oven now for 10, 10 to 12 minutes, so we're just going to put it out and we're just going to leave it there. Uh, to start plating, we've warmed up our Charlotte new potatoes just in a pan and we've got the saffron sauce ready to go as well. So first thing I'm going to do is going to get some of these potatoes and we're just going to put them into the centre of the plate just for like a little bed for that hake, just to lift it out of that sauce slightly. So we'll put those in there, like so. Next up, we're going to get the saffron sauce. So in here you've got the, the lovely St. Austell Bay mussels selection of root vegetables, so we've got celeriac, carrot and some swede in there. We're just going to dot that around as well. And we're just going to do the vegetables and the mussels first and then finish off with some of the sauce. We get nice spoonfuls of that sauce. It's got a lovely colour due to that saffron in there as well. And once you've got your root vegetables and your mussels in there, we're going to go, go for the hake. So you just get a fish slice, just gently go underneath as it's quite delicate, hake. 
I'm just going to sit that on top there. Get rid of that container. And finally, the sea herbs, again, that we foraged ourselves because they grow in abundance around here on the Isle of Wight. They've just been cooking with the lid on, just in some butter. We'll finish it off, finish the dish off with them, just to add another lovely little colour. And also they give a nice little saltiness to the dish as well. So here we have the fish main course for you, which is the grilled Cornish hake, root vegetables, St Austell Bay mussels, and finishing off with the rock sunfire. For the main course, we have a beautiful oxtail and chicken mousse ravioli. Uh, to accompany that, we have a red wine and oxtail sauce. In this container here, we just have some celeriac fondants and some lovely wild mushrooms. So we've got chanterelles and black trumpets. And just back here, we have our buttered spinach. So to start with, we're gonna take our ravioli, just using the backboard. We're gonna pop it into our simmering water for about 10 minutes. While that's cooking, we're gonna get, with the lid on, the celeriac and wild mushrooms, and then we'll be back to plate up. So to plate up the main course, we're just going to grab out our wild mushrooms and celeriac fondants and we're just going to put them there as well. We're just going to take the lids off the spinach and the fondants. So to start with, we're going to get our ravioli that's been simmering away now in our pan. And we've just got the pan I'm putting it into, just has a little emulsion in there. So in there there's a little bit of butter, a little bit of water. And that's just going to help glaze that ravioli. So again, we'll leave it there. I'm just going to add a touch of seasoning on the top, like so. So to start plating, we're going to get the spinach and we're going to place it in the centre of our heated serving plate. I'm just going to make a little bed for that ravioli to sit on. I'm going to get some of these fondants from this tub here. We've got three of them so we're going to place them around. Then in that little gap we're going to add the wild mushrooms. So like I said we've got some lovely yellow chanterelles some black trumpets in there as well. Which just adds a nice earthiness that helps ties the dish together with that oxtail. Like so, let's get the last few in there. Get rid of our two containers. And then just before we put the ravioli on, we're just gonna get some of that emulsion. We're just gonna get our spoon, we're just gonna lift it up over just to coat it like that. Almost basting it. Then we're gonna put our spoon down, we're just gonna get a fish slice. Gently scoot up underneath so it will be warm. Take off any of that excess emulsion and just place that in the centre on top of the spinach. Now to finish the dish, go the spoon and I love the oxtail sauce. And if the ravioli falls off like that, don't worry. Just gently pick it back up and place it in the centre. Even happens to us here in the UB Chef kitchen. And then just gently sauce in and around. And if you have any excess sauce, you can put it in a serving jug and take it to the table and serve with you. And then that finishes off our meat main course of the oxtail and chicken ravioli, celeric fondants and wild mushrooms. Vegetarian main course for you, we have a lovely, lovely dish for you. We have this hispy cabbage that's just been barbecued and you get a really nice subtle flavour from that. We're going to start by dropping that in the water for 10 to 12 minutes, so I'm just going to put that in there. Let's go with that. The lovely romescu sauce that's made with olive white tomatoes, really roasted to get a nice dark colour, flaked almonds, and just finished with a little bit of sherry vinegar. We have some tomato petals made with olive white tomatoes, and then from the inside of those, we've got a lovely tomato and shallot dressing, crispy cabbage, and these almond potatoes. So once that's been in for about six minutes, we're going to put the almond potatoes in for about six to eight minutes, and then we'll be back to plate up. So to plate up the vegetarian main course of the barbecue cabbage, just grabbed our potatoes out of the oven, they've been in for six to eight. Next, we're going to grab the hispy cabbage out of the um, water. And we've just got a dish here that where we're going to be able to retain all that butter that's been cooked in. And you don't want to lose any of that. So just get that into the container there and just leave it to one side. So we're going to start plating up now. Start with, get the romesco sauce. We'll just put a nice big spoonful of that in the middle. And then either with the back of the spoon, or if you've got one, you grab a small ladle, be a little bit chefy here, and then just lightly rotate it to make a circle for that cabbage to sit in. So just like that. Next up, we're gonna cut out, open the cabbage from its eco pouch. And in there, you can see all that lovely almond and lemon thyme butter. We just wanna keep that, so we're gonna flake the smell coming from that. You can really smell the barbecue from that. 
see the nice flaked almond sat on top there as well. So what I'd advise is there's some string on this. You've got to remember to take that off. But it can be very delicate, the cabbage. So I'll go under with the fish slice. Lift it up like so, just holding it, just so it doesn't fall apart. And just carefully slide that into the middle like that. I'll leave the string on at this point. And then you can either just lift it off delicately like so, or if you've got to hand some scissors, just snip it and pull it off. So just put that to one side. Next up, we're gonna go on with the almond potatoes. We've got three of those there. So it's just a nice little potato mixture, panned into flaked almonds and deep fried. The tomato petals come with this lovely tomato water dressing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the top off the bag, like so, remove that plastic. And then we're just gonna pour it over to dress those tomatoes. We're gonna to get a spoon. We're going to lift them up and you've got, see you've got the lovely shape of the tomato there. They've been lightly dried with some lemon thyme on there, a little bit of almond as well, and place those around. And then we're going to finish off with a little bit of the, the tomato dressing because it's a nice little sharpness, like so. Some of the butter just over the top. And then finally, I'll just grab the crispy cabbage, which has just been in the oven for one to two minutes to re-crispen, and we'll put that around the dish, leaning it on those potatoes to finish it off. So this is the vegetarian main course, and we have the barbecued hispy cabbage, romesco sauce, Isle of Wight tomatoes, and almond potatoes. Here we have your first dessert. We have a lovely pavlova of stem ginger and four Yorkshire rhubarb. So to plate up, we're going to start by getting our stem ginger dip mat, just cutting a little uh, end, bit of the end to fill up our meringue shell. Just going to take our meringue shell here, just going to quickly fill that up, like so. And I'm just going to quickly put that back in the container like that and leave that there and get rid of the dip mat. Next, we're going to get the carpaccio. So like with all our carpaccios, we have the presentation side. I'm going to start by taking off that top layer and getting rid of that, that just going to the bin and then flipping it over. And with this, I'm just going to put it slightly off centre and then carefully remove the UB Chef paper, leaving that lovely pink Yorkshire rhubarb carpaccio. Next, we're going to get that filled meringue shell. We're going to place it just slightly to one side, like so. We're going to finish off with our poached pieces of the Yorkshire rhubarb. This Yorkshire rhubarb is lovely because you get that vibrant pink colour and it's got a lovely taste and again it's perfect for this time of year. It's going to go three pieces, you've got some lemon thyme in there, finish off with the stem ginger and then with the syrup I'm just going to get a little spoon and just be careful with this syrup where it is, is a little bit thin. You don't want it running around all over the plate. But it's such a nice colour. Just a few little dots going around. And then that finishes off our dessert here. And we have the pavlova of stem ginger and four shorts of rhubarb. Second dessert for you, we have a lovely caramel tart uh, with bitter chocolate shavings blood orange salad and a blood orange gel. So to plate this one up, we're gonna get the chocolate shaving straight from the fridge, just with a spoon. Just off the plate, we're gonna sprinkle these round to cover up. We're just doing it off the plate, so if any of those shavings do fall onto the, onto the board, they're not going onto our serving plate. And just get the rest of them on there, like so. You get them on there and then just spread them out and just to cover the top of that tart. Once you've covered them, just put that to one side and you can just lift that onto your serving plate. Next up, we're just going to get a little spoon. I'm going to start arranging the blood oranges. Some on top, some around the dish. Again, get creative with this one. You don't need to go by the book all the time. Get some of this lovely candied orange in there as well. Some more of the blood orange segments. This one works really well because you've got the caramel, the orange and the dark chocolate. And then to finish it off, we're just going to snip off in a second the end of our piping bag which has a lovely orange gel on. And we're going to pipe this just around the dish. Do some nice piles of this. Again, just do some around like so. And a couple on there as well, so you can get a bit of the orange 
bit of the dark chocolate and some of that caramel tart in every bite to really make the most of this dessert. And then there we have our dark chocolate and caramel tart with blood orange salad. Just finished cooking this week's box menu and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget you can order, always order for next week as well. On the website we have some lovely new extras including Petit Fours. So hopefully we'll see you again next week and happy cooking.